John here, and this is your Tuesday Blues. But before we get started with the lesson, I just want to say, wherever you are in the world, I really hope that you're doing well. I hope you're healthy, I hope you're safe, and I hope you're steering clear of this virus. I mean, this is something that we're really, truly all experiencing together, and that to me is, is kind of comforting. And if you find yourself with some extra time because of the quarantine, looking for a guitar lesson, I hope this one helps you out some. We're in open G tuning. And we're really gonna put our slide chops to work here as well. We're gonna work on some cool rhythmic techniques with the picking hand. So let's dive right into it. Let's start with the opening little phrase and uh, we'll start breaking this thing down. One, two, three, four. All right, so believe it or not, that's just a tiny little bit of music, but there's quite a lot going on there. So we're gonna dig into the details here. First thing is I'm coming down with this percussive attack. So this is beat one, this is the down beat. It's very important and we're not even playing a note. We're just playing this uh, percussive attack. And what's happening with my pick hand is I'm coming down on the strings with the flat part of my nails, right? I'm not picking through it like this. It's more of a, you know, with the broad side of your nail. And as well, really at the same time, I'm coming down with a heavy palm mute, right? Now this, I'm not killing the guitar, but I'm, I am doing this with some intent, right? And my palm is choking out the strings. I don't want to hear that I want to hear just that real choppy super staccato and that's really accomplished by you know the scratch sound you hear is by the nails but the the choking sound is accomplished with the palm this part of my hand so I want you to get that down and I want you to kind of come back to that on the downbeats a great way to kind of keep your place in the music and make sure that you know where that one is the all important downbeat all right, so the next thing that's happening is on the end of one, I'm pushing through the fifth string, but I've got that palm mute happening. And you're really not hearing much of a note there. It's really more of a grace note, but it also sets me up where my thumb is now resting on top of the fourth string. And I'm gonna use that to my advantage in just a little bit. But what we're gonna do for the next note is start here on my B flat, third string, third fret, slide back to the A and then open. It's not gonna ring like that, but those are the notes. All right, so we're sliding. Then, this is pretty tricky, what we're gonna do right here. My thumb's resting on the fourth string. I'm gonna hit that open, and then I'm gonna hammer on with the slide from the D note up to the E. So that's the second fret on the fourth string. Then hit the third string open, then third fret, the F note on the fourth string, and then the open third string. All right, and a little bit slower we've got. All right, now we'll basically repeat that little rhythmic idea. All the percussion and everything that we've been doing with the right hand's gonna stay pretty much the same. We're just gonna alter the ending of this little riff um, really each time we go around. So the first time we end just like we just demonstrated, but the second time, I wanna slide up to the fourth string, fifth fret, okay? So sliding up to that G versus hitting the open G. And there's a reason for that. Yes, those are the same notes, right? But with a slide, I can slide into that and I get that G, I scoop into it. You can't do that with an open string, just not possible. But when we choose this note, we can get that cool, classic, bluesy slide sound, sliding right into that, that G. And then for our third time around, we'll go back to the first time. And then the last time around, um, feel free to take a little bit of creative license with this, but generally what I wanna do with this is slide from the third fret back off to the open. So kind of that slide we've done before, and from time to time, I'll change that and go up to the fifth fret on the third string and do that. All 
right? And that's kind of cool. It kind of, that G hanging there, really. It's, it's kind of home base, but yeah, it's a great time to kind of move into our four chord here, which is the next part of the riff. But as I said, if you want to get a little bit of a different inflection articulation on that last little uh, bit of the riff before you head into the four chord, try sliding from that fifth fret, something that um, you'll probably see me do in this video. But when we're done, we're not going to strike for beat one after that, right? So we've kind of got this little riff and we've done it four times. Um, to start the fifth bar here, you can come down and give a good attack to that downbeat, but I want to slide into the fifth fret, right? This is our four chord, and when you slide into it, you still kind of, you get that scooping sound into the uh, chord tones like I was talking before. Really cool, that sliding chord is just awesome to me. And we'll slide in, apply a little bit of vibrato there, and again, I'm not choking it out on this downbeat, I wanna let it ring. All right. Sliding in, and then we're going to work with that B flat. But you could play this like that with the slide, but I really like to strengthen different areas of my technique when I can. And so, what we're going to do here is work on our ability to switch between the slide and fretted notes, okay? And that's how we're going to play that B flat. All right. So we only do that once. I just looped it there for demonstration for you. We are sliding back in. And then we're going to move that sliding chord concept up to the eighth fret. And then we're focusing really on these three strings, two, three, and four. Then we're sliding up to the 10th fret to kind of finish that line off. So we've got this for our four chord part. And from that point, we're done. That really takes us through this entire little idea. And you could absolutely take off on this, add some different parts, and build you a nice little bluesy composition over it. But this is a great one to take to the woodshed. We've got a lot happening with the pick hand, as we've taken a look at. We've got these weird little you know, hammer-ons with the slide. And then we've got those cool slurred notes that we really want to get sounding good. Then we've got the ability, the technique of playing fretted notes while we're wearing a slide. And that may look a bit, little bit different for you if you're wearing the slide on another finger, but it's something that you'll, you'll hear a lot, you'll see a lot, and to me it's a sound that just drives me crazy, so I want to make sure that you're working on it too. It's a great thing to have in your arsenal. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it fun and challenging, but if you found it a bit too challenging, then you might want to check out my guide, Five Simple Steps to Better Slide Guitar. It really focuses on what I consider to be some of the bedrock techniques that you need in order to play good, clean slide guitar. And with practice, it'll help you grow into pieces like what we just covered. So if that's you and it would help you out, then click over here and pick up the guide. And if you want to keep learning, there's a video waiting for you right here just click or tap over there and i'll see you in the next video until then practice smart and play on